This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Took an oath to protect and serve, but tonight multiple police officers from Antioch and Pittsburgh are under arrest as part of a federal corruption probe. They were taken into custody during early morning raids. A few hours ago, the FBI revealed nine current and former officers and another employer charged. Six from Antioch, four from Pittsburgh PD. The accusations include officers faking college degrees to defraud their departments, conspiracy to distribute steroids, destroying evidence, improperly using canines on people, and a number of other civil rights violations. Our Wilson Walker has more on the charges revealed just today. Allegations that officers schemed to obtain course credits to boost their compensation. Just one of the counts unsealed today. And as all of that moves forward, more discussion about where Pittsburgh and Antioch move forward from here. The indictment describes how defendants boasted about their illegal uses of force in text messages between one another. The defendants also allegedly shared photos of their victims' injuries and even collected as mementos, spent ammunition from their attacks on the people of Antioch. Collectively, these four indictments describe a group of officers who acted as though they were above the law. U.S. Attorney Ismail Ramsey outlining just some of the allegations unsealed today, and he spoke directly to the gravity of the charges. Police officers take an oath. The indictments unsealed today paint a picture of officers who have violated that oath. When this happens, the damage done to the public trust cannot easily be calculated. Today, for me, means that all the work of the community, from being on the front lines, coming to this city hall for years or even decades saying do something, is a fruit of that labor. For those who have been pressing for reform, this was a kind of breakthrough, hopefully towards something better. My only hope from all of this is that something good comes from it. We can um, use Antioch as an example for the rest of the country, in a sense, where we know that this is going on. It's just not isolated to Antioch or Pittsburgh, you know. Antioch Mayor Lamar Thorpe released a statement saying, quote, today is a dark day in our city's history and the beginning of the end of a long and arduous process, unquote. Um, I don't think that today is a dark day at all for Antioch. I think this is a day to reflect on the past and how we want to move forward. A lot of rebuilding to do here in Antioch where a new police chief is also needed after the recent departure of the man who was supposed to lead the city through reform. Now we reached out to a defense attorney associated with at least one of the accused officers. We have not yet received a response. Wilson, thank you for that latest information. You'll recall that the Antioch Police Department has been embroiled in a racist text message scandal. Those text messages came to light because of this FBI investigation, and then it led to almost half of the city's police force being placed on leave. So joining us now is former FBI agent and law enforcement expert Jeff Harp. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Sure, no problem. Yeah, so given the Antioch Police Department's past and what we know, how did these new allegations sound to you now? Well, you know, when they start peeling the layers of the onion back on this investigation, you start finding things that you didn't expect. And my guess is that, you know, the steroid, uh, the, the crimes with the steroid distribution, the college scandal, all these things sort of culminated into one big package. I'm sure they were looking at uh, the color of law violations initially. And once you start uh, tapping phones, intercepting text messages and things like that, you start uh, finding out things that you initially didn't know were going on. Yeah, if we talk about so much allegations of corruption, what does this do to a department? What does this do to a community? How do they regain confidence? Yeah, that, that's always a real tough one because we are struggling in these times right now anyway with law enforcement having such a tough time recruiting, you know, the public having a sup, such a tough time trusting law enforcement. And then you have events like this happen. It really, really, it just shatters the, the confidence in, in the law enforcement community. It's a shame. Um, you know, I think Antioch and Pittsburgh can both pull out of this. I know when I was in the Bureau, we had operations against law enforcement officers, uh, and they're very serious. It's, it's a very serious uh, 
situation when you go into that. Yeah, so now what happens to these officers accused of these allegations in the indictment and the charges in the indictment? What now? Yeah, you know, that's real important that you said the allegation because as the the U.S. attorney stated during the news conference at 3.30, these are allegations mm -hmm. and they have to be proved. And so they will have to build their case and present that to a jury of their peers. And hopefully that, uh, and I'm sure the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI has a very solid foundation for bringing these charges because they would not bring charges against a police officer unless they had concrete evidence. Yes, and we should note that it is a long list of allegations. All right, Jeff Harp. Jeff, long list. <laughs> yes. Long list. All right, Jeff, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. So Thanks. two students stabbed at their San Jose High School are recovering in the hospital tonight. One is expected to be okay. The other was more seriously wounded but now stable in the incident at James Lick High. The view from our chopper shows the school basketball court taped off, but police say whoever did it was gone by the time they got there. It forced the whole campus into lockdown around 1130 and classes were canceled for the day. I guess it was a little bit scary because, like, the fact that we have that going on in our school. I think it's sad and, like, heartbreaking. I think we should be safer. A student shared this video with us of a fight on that basketball court that school staffers broke up. It's unclear if it is relating to the stabbing. Less than a week after state regulators gave Cruz and Waymo the green light to expand their robo taxi operations across San Francisco, the city is pushing back. The city attorney filing a motion asking for that approval to be suspended. And it comes in the wake of big weekend traffic jams involving robo taxis near outside lands. And at least one new case of a driverless car getting in the way of an emergency response. It's the job of city officials to keep our communities safe. Uh, and that is what we're focused on. We're actually not bypassing the process. In fact, we're engaging with the process. So the city says if the motion is denied, it will try a different approach to get the authorization passed and paused. Students at Cal State East Bay are collecting donations on campus to send to Maui. So that includes water and phone chargers, flashlights and first aid kits. At least 111 people are now confirmed dead in the Maui fires. And if you do want to help, we're keeping track of the different ways you can on KPIX.com. Hurricane Hillary is intensifying as it makes its way up Mexico's coast with California right in its path. In San Clemente, they are pushing rocks and sand higher up on beaches, and they're just hoping to protect the area there from the storm surge. They're also concerned about landslides in areas already dealing with erosion. San Clemente is spreading plastic over vulnerable hillsides, monitoring the coastal rail line below the bluffs. There's also a problem at some SoCal beaches. Not enough sand. That stretch of the coastline has been starved of sand for decades. It's now trying to survive with very little sand in the system. Um, so the efforts that we're taking to put more sand in are going to be good for that whole stretch of the coastline, but we need to do more. Hurricane Hillary is expected to get stronger tomorrow before easing down as it makes landfall this weekend. Let's leave you with something adorable. Adorable little mountain lion cubs just trying to practice their roar. Take a listen. Closely, you can hear one of the cubs trying to show off just how ferocious it is. The pair was found in Southern California earlier this month. Love that. Thanks for watching the news. Continue streaming on CBS News Bay Area. We'll see you back here at 11 o'clock. Have a great evening.